Hello everyone, it's Jan Bedell, the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. Welcome back for this week's Brain Coach Tip. God has given me revelation about how to make the brain work better, and I'm happy to be here to share it with you. Over the last 20 plus years, I've seen thousands of families incorporate the neurodevelopmental approach to life and see amazing results. I've seen frustrated parents become encouraged, and I tell you, there's not much that is more frustrating than thinking your child has mastered something, and then the next day, they look at that thing like it's a cow at a new gate. It's like they've never seen it before. This situation is very defeating for the kiddos, too. But I've seen this change to a new confidence in themselves. My goal today is to equip you with information as to why this lack of recall is happening as well as give you resources that can change your child's functional ability. As I shared with you in podcast number one, I know the grief of losing a child as well as the grief of not knowing how to help her with her functional abilities and learning challenges when she was here on earth. Please share the link to this podcast with your friends and family. There may be someone you can touch that is crying out for some help for their situation. You just never know when you might be the link God wants to use so another family can get the help they're praying for. Now let's delve into the topic for today. You knew it yesterday. What happened on that test? You may have asked yourself that when your child comes home from school with a bad grade on a test or they take a test in your home school on something that you know that they know. Well, these children may or may not have a learning label. I was one that didn't have a label, but I had this problem. I was one of those strong, eager to please firstborn children, and I would study and study and study. Some people see their child as overworking. They just work and work and work. Well, that was me. On the other hand, some people, the children just go, it's too hard. I'm just out of here. Those are kind of two personalities that have this issue. Well, I was a hard worker, and I just would study and study and study, and I'd go in to take the test, and it was like I knew the answer. I could look at the question. I could even see it in my notes. I could see where I'd highlighted it, and I could see it over on the page, but I couldn't quite read what it was. I was under pressure in that testing situation, and so totally went into my emotional side of the brain where that information was not accessed. And then I would walk out of the door and a couple of steps down the hall, and that answer would come to me. It was so frustrating. But when the pressure's off, then now you can access that information because you're not in that emotional hemisphere. You're in your dominant hemisphere where all that was stored. I'm going to give you some reasons why this might be happening. But as always, I'm going to invite you to look at education differently. Especially when looking at a child that you know is smart, but just can't seem to remember things from one day to the next. Especially on a test. If you've heard me before, you'll know that I talk a lot about the foundation of the brain. Now, the brain controls everything that we do, so we have to start there. It's the foundation for everything. And if you have a disorganized brain, you're going to have disorganized behavior. That's going to equal poor functional ability, like poor retrieval. So the foundation is really important. I'm just going to touch on some pieces here because I've talked about this in other podcasts and today we don't have time to go into all the foundation, but let's just review a little bit. The brain forms pathways all through the body so that your little finger, for instance, can move. That's a pathway that when you think of that, it actually happens. These pathways are called neuropathways. These must be complete and strong. The lack of developmental stimuli as infants actually results in gaps in learning abilities. So we've got to make sure these are strong. We call this neurological organization. And it starts with an infant as they're 
just being on the ground and crawling around on their stomach uh, like an army crawl and then getting up on their hands and knees. That's where a lot of this organization starts. It's actually the foundation for the organization of your thoughts and your movements, your coordination, those kinds of things. Just like a roadway in your city, if the foundation is not laid well, then it's not going to function well and it's going to erode and become unusable. The same thing happens with our brain. If these pathways through crawling and creeping, just the essential things for neurological organization, are not done long enough and well enough, then the learning information just doesn't stick. It's not going to stick without that proper foundation. So the good news is you can go back and, and get that in, even if they're older children. You can do some of this lower level crawling and creeping and make a huge difference in that foundation. Another part of the foundation is receiving information. And one thing the crawling and creeping does is get that tactile information into your brain. But you've also got visual and auditory that needs to come in. If your child has a struggle remembering, you know, they knew their numbers and letters one day, the next day they don't know them, this could be visual processing. They're just not taking that information in well. And so that's part of the foundation. The auditory, paying attention to sounds, being able to follow directions, that's also an aspect of the foundation that's important to obviously remembering what you learn. First you have to take it in, process it in your short-term memory before it can go to long-term memory. Our sponsor for this podcast is Little Giant Steps. Little Giant Steps has provided life-changing solutions for accelerating learning, helping with memory, working on functional abilities in individuals of all ages through their in-home brain training programs and products. I want to encourage you, if you're looking for ways to help this foundation, to check out the different activities and programs on Little Giant Steps store. You can search visual and find a lot of the different things that can help with the visual, or you can search auditory, and there'll be a list of things there. To help with auditory, which is such an important part of the foundation, I want to encourage you to listen to podcast number four, which is called The Best Kept Secret in Education. That's auditory processing. So go back and check that out because that is a huge part of the foundation. And again, if they can't bring that information in auditorily, they're not going to be able to store it so that they retain it long term. One of my favorite stories about retrieving information is the story of Daniel. He was a homeschooled young man and he was 14 years old when I saw him first. His mother brought him in for an in-person evaluation and I did some testing on him and that kind of thing and then I do a parent consultation after the evaluation of the child and we talked and the mom said it's the darndest thing she said he'll know a word one day and or a group of words and then we look at it the next day and it is just amazing that he just looks at me kind of like well are you going to teach me this because it's like he never saw it she said we would look under the table and just try to make a joke of it because, you know, here he is 14 years old and can't remember even a word to read. Uh, they would just try to make a joke out of it, wondering where it was, looking under the table. But, of course, she was very frustrated, and because he was homeschooled, she was able to keep his self-esteem intact and knew that he was going to get it someday, but just didn't know why he wasn't getting it. After about 18 months of brain training, where he was working on lower level, the auditory and visual, all of those kinds of things to build that foundation, it was like he, before he was a sieve. You know, there was all these holes, and mom was trying to pour information in, pour information in, and it was all leaking out. What neurodevelopment does is build a bowl and fill in all those holes so when you pour that information in it actually sticks and can hold there well Daniel went from a 14 year old that couldn't even read basically at all 
two, a young man that graduated on time with his peers from homeschool and then graduated from college with a 3.8. So I just want to say that to encourage you because it's not a matter of intelligence. Obviously, Daniel was intelligent. Those neural pathways were not working for him. One of the things we looked at with Daniel and all the clients that we look at is their long-term memory or storage. We believe that has to do with dominance. And dominance is basically you have two eyes, two ears, two hands, and two feet. But one of them, the brain chooses for the dominant one. And that's controlled by the dominant hemisphere, which is the opposite. So if you're right-handed, your left hemisphere is your dominant hemisphere. If you're left-handed, your right hemisphere is the one that's dominant. But the main thing about dominance you want to look at is it's best for everything to be the same on one side. Yes, you see with two eyes, but your brain chooses one to store information. You're, you hear with two ears, but your brain chooses one to store that auditory information. Now, when you're considering dominance, you have to start with the hand. The hand is genetic. It's predisposed to be either right or left dominant. Now, oftentimes we influence the hand, and that's a thing that you really don't want to do. Different things have happened over the years culturally that have influenced the hand. Like, for instance, when my father was going to school, they just slapped his left hand and made him sit on it because they didn't want him writing with that left hand, even though he was a left-handed person. When looking at your children, you want to be very careful not to influence their hand dominance. Hand dominance is the one that they would typically pick up a block with, eat with a crayon, brush their teeth, play a sport, or brush their hair. That would just naturally happen. Dominance is established typically between age 4 and 8. Sometimes it shows up before that, but if you have any left-handed people in your family, or like my father, uh, closet lefties, you have to be really careful and put everything at the midline for your children so you don't influence them. Part of our culture is influencing this anyway. You know, we start them writing earlier and earlier these days. And that computer mouse, where is it? It's typically on the right side. And those scissors, they don't work in your left hand. As a society, we're kind of prejudiced toward the right hand. One thing I want you to understand is that when there's mixed dominance, like say they're right-handed but left-eyed or left-eared or both, it can cause some pretty significant problems. The inefficient filing of information, so it's not always going to the place where they can get it, that's a big issue. If they're left-eyed, they're going to put it in the opposite hemisphere than their hand. In this particular instance, if they're right-handed, this is going to cause inconsistent recall of information. One day they're going to know it, the next day they don't know it. Some other symptoms that come from being mixed dominant is lack of analytical thought or logic. They're just not very logical. They can be really emotional, easily upset, hard to calm down. This can cause some erratic behaviors, tantrums, anxieties, especially over tests, phobias. Sometimes it can cause depression and even shyness because they're smart kids and they just don't seem like they're getting it like the rest of the kids. So it just makes them hold back instead of participating. In podcast number 19 called Neuroplasticity, I go over how to test for this dominance for the eye and ear and hand and foot. But if you're more of a visual learner and you want to see it, you can look at the Neurodevelopmental DVD on the Little Giant Steps website. That's going to give you information there as well as some free articles on the site as well. In the meantime, let me give you an example of someone that would have visual mixed dominance. In other words, they're right-handed, right ear, right foot, but their eye is left. 
what's going to happen is that's going to cause a problem with their visual long-term memory. So you might go, I know the child's smart. I can tell him something. He hears it, and he can tell me that back. But visually, he looks at something, and he can't remember it. That's because that file cabinet is going awry. It's like taking a picture of a giraffe and putting it in the second drawer and you know it's in that file cabinet and you even know it's in the second drawer but it's really difficult to find because you didn't put it under G for giraffe. So some people can, like I said at the beginning, some people will just dig and dig and dig through that second drawer until they finally find it and some people are going to say, it's just too hard, I'm moving on. Now if everything was right the eye, the hand, and the foot were right, but the ear was left, so the auditory information was being stored in the wrong hemisphere of the brain, then they're going to have auditory long-term memory problems. This could cause them to be tactile or visual learners because their auditory just isn't working well to retrieve that information. So again, filing it in the wrong place and not being able to find it when they need it. That's the hallmark, I guess you would say, of mixed dominance. The foot dominance, if it's on the opposite side of the hand, that just shows some disorganization, but it doesn't really affect the academics as much. It's basically the eye and ear that have the most to do with that recall, inconsistent recall. So if you're having that issue, I want you to investigate how to test for that and there's also something that you can do to change the dominance, which is the good news, because that filing system can be reorganized so that it can come out well. So to address the things that we've talked about, the organization of the brain and the processing and the dominance, we encourage you to do Little Giant Steps brain training programs. It does take a little time to get the brain organized and some specific stimulation but we teach you to do it at home, which makes it very affordable. One of the things that you might want to look at starting with is called developmental foundations. That's something that the whole family can do and everybody can benefit from it. So look into that. As you've learned these things through the different podcasts, I just want to encourage you with this scripture from 1 Timothy 4.15. Put these things into practice. Devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. And I tell you, with the different testimonies that we have, it's really wonderful to see how much progress there can really be when you do this kind of work. The truth is, there's a reason why your child, or maybe this is even happening to you, where you can't recall information or retain it well. The good news is there's something that you can do about it. You absolutely can train the brain to recall information better. I'm hoping you're finding the truth in all of this. And in John 8:32, we're encouraged with these words. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. So being set free from inconsistent recall can be a huge blessing. I want to encourage you to stay tuned where you'll continue to receive more Brain Coach tips to make life and learning easier. Next week, we'll be discussing success in homeschooling your struggling learner. If God's calling you to educate your struggling learner at home, He will equip you to do it. I have watched thousands of moms with no other education training take this neurodevelopmental approach to life and create the confidence and they're given the power, they're empowered to change their child's life. You can do it too. God bless.